Welcome back to Crown's Crypto Cave and a happy little Sunday morning to you as you get on your way for your beautiful day. Enjoy a nice Sunday morning. Have a nice croissant or a coffee or whatever the fuck you're doing. But pray to go Jesus because he needs your love and he needs your help and he loves you. So as always, I've been doing these kind of like market update wrap ups on uh, Sunday morning. Um, kind of talking a little, bit, a little bit about more long-term analysis. We'll definitely talk about some more shorter-term trade ideas as well. But this video, just to be very, very clear, will be focused on more long-term uh, dealings. So without further ado, let's jump into the live scene over here. And what do we got? Bitcoin putting in another, <laughs> an, another consolidation airy-ish uh, formation right here um, with the close of last night's daily. So with that said we can actually nail this down, this whole pattern down to this area right here. And I believe this is uh, 6150 support, which we've been looking at for the last uh, almost 10 months now. And if we get our diagonal trend line over here, we can see that, hey, there is a very obvious descending trend line right here. Again, uh, diagonal trend line is not my favorite one to do, but when, you, when, but, when, but when it fits, you must acquit. So you got to use it over here. Anyways, uh, yesterday's daily closing above the yellow 21 exponential. So that to me gave me a clear signal to do nothing <laughs> i was looking for a break of that uh to take a position but uh but we didn't quite get it so i'm just sitting and waiting one more day and you can see that this pattern is getting extremely full over here uh there's an apex coming in around uh late october early november um however this thing can blow at any goddamn at any goddamn given moment as I catch my words over here. Anyways, uh, yes, we do still have the big overall downturn resistance that we've been looking at for quite some time. But I do believe that the interim um, smaller descending triangle is the one that's going to kind of give the actual like momentous to to break the bigger one either which way. So whether it's to the downside or the upside, well, obviously the downside, you know, that's going to they, they have the same support essentially. But if it breaks to the upside, you you probably will get a nice try up here. Uh, 7250, 7300, and that could very well easily be, you know, it could, I mean, anytime that you come up there, pop up there and, and try to break it, you could very well break it. Anything's possible at this moment in time. Now, going over here to the two day, there's a couple of big things to be aware of. First things first, as always, the, the two day death cross right here, the green 55 X mills crossing the downside of the purple 200. Uh, you can see that, yes, we did close our two day uh, candlestick below this yellow 21 exponential right here. And if we were to close the next one below it as well, I would start to get a little bit more aggressive with my trading, uh, with my trading habits. Um, very obviously, and before I forget, we do have this guy right here, this resistance right here, which we actually perfectly wicked up and tested yesterday, or I guess on the last two day uh, candlestick right here, right around 68.50. So I do like how all these lines kind of converge at one area and it's coming from, com coming from this past prior action over here, which was a great um, resistance kind of holding back this momentous uh, breakout over here. So again, a lot of things to be aware of in this uh, in this upcoming week because this thing is getting so damn tight that it is just incredibly likely to break. Now, what else do we have to look at? Well, we have plenty of things to look at, so just hold on tight. But I do want to remind everyone, first things first, uh, while obviously any pattern can break out any goddamn which way, a descending triangle is more statistically likely to break up to the downside. We have been living under this for the last almost 10 months now. Uh, 10 months starting tomorrow because it's October. <laughs> and... Um, and perhaps you might just get a Halloween dip. You know, people are just taking out their money to buy fucking costumes and shit. Um, but, um, but assuming, you know, but assuming uh, just neutrality in that, what we can say is that, hey, when you spend 10 months building up a consolidation pattern, it's going to very likely lead to an incredibly violent breakout or breakdown. Now, again, it is, you know, any, I've seen every goddamn pattern break out any goddamn which way, but I do have my biases here as we have been living under the, the, the red 200 simple moving average for quite some time. It is sloped to the downside. It is aggressively sloped to the downside. Not only that, but we are flirting around with this yellow 20 month exponential. Once again, the blue 30, 30 simple moving average right here on the daily, which is my most important for looking at slope is, is sloped to the downside. And it never even really got sloped to the upside, even on this rally, even on this rally right here, which tells me that, Hey, the real momentous direction is actually to the downside. The last time we actually had an upward slope was right over here. And that was a pretty damn, damn good rally. Uh, compare the volume on this rally with the volume of this rally and this rally's past or that we're currently in and uh, and you can see why I'm a little bit less uh, less excited about this thing right here right now um, 
Again, yes, we do have the two-day uh, candlestick cross over here, the two-day death, death cross right there, which, by the way, we've only had one other, one, one other uh, example in the almost 10-year history, history of Bitcoin right over here. Um, and you'll notice that right over here, uh, you, you get the cross right here in a very similar situation. You know, you come up and test the yellow, or sorry, the green 55, and then boom, all the way down, all the way down to the fucking gutter. And if we go back on uh, over here where I can actually draw something and not fuck up my charts too bad, I'm going to uh, demonstrate that, hey, we did have, a, we did actually have a nice consolidation pattern back then as well. A broadening wedge consolidation pattern, which is a typically, typically bearishly resolved consolidation. Well, do we have something similar going on over here? Well, perhaps not on the two day, unless if you count something like this, although I'm not, you know, I'm not quite sure how much I believe in that. Uh, but what I, but what I can say is that all, if you go down to the four hour, if you go into the dregs of the four hour, there's a very obvious consolidation pattern right here, which is a broadening wedge by definition, because it's not necessarily parallel. Yes. You could make the argument that it's, that's a bear flag with just kind of a throw over to the downside, or maybe even you start uh, it from over here, but fair enough. I'm just going to give it the benefit of the doubt. And overall, my point is you have this you have this very orderly drop off in volume coming into this area right here it's you know it's it's by no mistake that these things like actually do make a trend with the volume in them um you know the bots and the algos rule this world and that's how markets are typically moved so you see a lot of these kind of like ebbs and flows that are chartable uh within the sphere Anyways, if it is going to be a bear flag, we might as well just make a measure move off of it. Just kind of fuck around. Um, again, do I believe in this too much? Well, I'm going to talk about some limitations with this. But again, ma making a huge assumption here, first things first, that we actually break this and resolve this pattern to the downside, which would have to have, you know, at least a four hour close below 6,300 ish area. Um, that would imply a move down around here to about 5,000 ish, even, you know, 5,100, 5, 5,000, which would, which would, which would line up with this prior high over here, which I do like for good influence um, as you did have a lot of uh, action did have a lot of uh, volume being done over here from past prior times because well people were interested in, I think it was one of the times that that China banned Bitcoin or some shit like that because they're they're always they're always banning Bitcoin <laughs> they banned it a few times um, but of course to talk about some limit limitations with this idea do be aware that uh, hey um, while this yes would be your proverbial support of this formation right here is this 6150 area that is the big bad one to me as long as you're above there i think that this whole formation in general is obviously safe from breaking down further yes there's nothing profound to be said about that but please let me explain i do believe that if you do break 6150 then you probably will initiate some severe downside yes there are supports along the way and i think that it's very likely that you probably have bounces along the way just because well well markets don't go markets don't go in a straight fucking line um uh, you know, namely right here at around 5,800, 5,850-ish area. We'd likely have another one right around here, right around 5,500. And then uh, I don't really see too much holding you up from about 5,000. If I do swap my my uh, my, proprietary, my proprietary Fibonacci over there, by the way, that is the video for that one is up on my channel. Um, definitely go check it out, the crown jewel. Uh, if we go over here to volume profile, it's probably going to agree with this. And oh my God, it's like I've done this a million fucking times before. Yeah, it, <laughs> you can see that. Hey, once you do lose this, this kind of high volume node session over here, there's very little being done all the way from about 5,800 ish area all the way down to about mid to low 4,000s, which by the way, we do have some nice horizontals coming in right around there as well. So I really like that for confluence. Good, good, good. Right in this area. Now, of course, we don't necessarily have a measured move taking us down there just yet. But what else do we have pointing down there? Well, I'm glad you asked because if we go over here to the date to the to the stamp chart over here, you can see that not only do we have the horizontals kind of lining in that area, not only do we have a measure move kind of aligning in that area, but also we have the 786 Fibonacci retracement kind of lining up in that area. Not only that, but we also have hey, get back on over here. 786 is right over here. Uh, it's a little bit higher. Um, and not not only that, but we also have this dotted trend line over here, which is coming all the way from basically the genesis of Bitstamp, which has never really been broken. And every time that Bitcoin's touched, it's never gone lower. Well, that would be meeting current price action somewhere right around this, like, you know, 4,000-ish, uh, low 5,000-ish area as it does rise over time. Now, with that said, I should say this. If you are following and you do believe in this dotted 10-year logarithmic trend line, which... It's been working so far. Um, it has good hist history so far. Um, by the end of the year, you would actually be given a low, potentially, of 6150. 
so there you go. You know, if you are a longer term thinker, if you are a longer term investor, I understand that people have completely different, you know, wants, needs, and aspirations within this market. And myself being a little bit more focused on the shorter time frames, uh, while it wouldn't be worth it to me to do this, maybe some people might look at this and say, "Hey, you got the you got that trend line coming in right around here. You're probably going to be you're probably going to end the year above there. That's good enough for me. I'll come back in a few years and be happy." And maybe you're right. Maybe that's valid. It's an idea. Um, not for me, not for me, but it is an idea. Uh, you also notice that the purple 200 exponential is going to start to crawl around in this area as well. And, oh, look at that. We just got a new subscriber. Hey, Clint Blessing, if you're if you're watching this at a future time, I want to say welcome, man. Good to meet you. <laughs> my, uh, my, my algos are still running in the background for whenever it subscribes. So there you go. Hey, pleasure to have you in here. Anyways, um... Okay, so back now over into, into here. Um, yeah, so we do have plenty of things kind of aligning with that area as well. Um, what else? What else do we have to look at? Well, if we go back on over here to my Finex charts, go back into the daily, you'll notice you'll notice that as Bitcoin kind of does crawl its way along this, what I'm, what I'm representing as a, uh, as, as a uh, broadening wedge, yes, the volume is declining. So to me, that is a, that is a very likely to be resolved to the downside consolidation over here with the rejection right here, a rejection on, on one of the more higher volume uh, candlesticks right here um, off the, uh, off the upper resistance at 68.50. Now, again, if Bitcoin were to kind of crawl its way back up over here and break this area, which is certainly possible at 68.50, um, I really don't see much stopping it from this area right here at about 7,100. I, I really don't see much stopping it. Yeah. Good, his, good historical relevancy of this area right here. And that'd probably coincide with a break. You know, I'm, we're making a lot of assumptions here. Major assumptions being made. Hey, major fucking assumptions being made. Uh, but it probably co coincide with a break of this, uh, purple and red 200 and, 200 simple and exponential movement averages over here, which would be a huge change of behavior in my opinion, as that would be the first time you've actually even really lived above them in a very long time, uh, which would also likely coincide and lead to a, a new high above this guy right here, which would be Bitcoin's first higher high in the last 10 months. And just by the most simple, simple chart guys definitions, the bulls need higher highs and the bears need one lower lows. There you go. It's, it's actually what is needed to create an uptrend. Um, so again, uh, things to be aware of. Now, of course, would I be saying that the that the bear market or or Bitcoin has not found or Bitcoin has found its lows? Uh, if that happened, I would say I don't want to necessarily be short, but I don't really start getting too interested until really above eight thousand and above ten thousand. Right here is like my slap in the face signal saying, "Hey, uh, we very, 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 very likely already seen the lows, and I ain't got no business being short or even looking for shorts anymore." Um, <laughs> Just stay naked, baby. Naked long all day long. And um, <laughs> anyways, so so with that said, you know, these are things to be aware of because it's the higher time frames that really do rule the world. We, we look at these things every day and people get excited about a $200 move and catching the knife down here. Guys, $62.50. I bought it. Yes. <sighs> it's never going lower. Oh, fuck. Oh, well, just got wicked out. I'll just try again. It's like, no, just... <laughs> patience here patience um and same thing for the people well the people who have been shorting these highs are probably pretty happy just because well when you short the highs you're on the side of the trend for the last 10 months and uh, the trend has certainly been your friend a very a very profitable friend indeed so there you go. Um, okay, so let's go over to the weekly. We will be getting a new weekly tonight at 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. And oh my God, the yellow the yellow 21 exponential and the green 55 exponential are so damn close to crossing, so damn close to kissing. Oh my God, they need to ask each other, is this for real? And do you have anything I should be aware about? Because I'm fucking clean. Anyway, <laughs> how does that even come around? Anyways, uh, if if they were to cross, it'd be the first time, or sorry, the second time ever in Bitcoin's history, much like the two-day dildo death cross as well, right over here in a very similar posturing and a very similar consolidation area formation. So again, another thing to just be aware of, and I do want to say this as well, on every exchange except for Sfinex, you will notice that, that, uh, that Bitcoin put in a bearish engulfing candlestick right here. And uh, it has never really been followed through. You had a couple of consolidation area... Uh, candlesticks to follow it up right here and right here but neither breaking the range either which way so to me that says hey you can i'm, I'm gonna put a lot of weight on this next candlestick right here because uh if it does break the low of this bearish engulfing 
candlestick, then that to me would be continuation. Yes, you do have your 100 exponential to kind of deal with down here, but we already have that marked off as a uh, horizontal, I believe. Um, if you did break the low of this guy right here at about 16.94 and 38 cents on Finex, or sorry, on Stamp, um, I would very likely think that you pro it probably coincides with the major break of that 61.50 big support that we spoke about to begin this, uh, this, this uh, video. And again, if the 100 exponential breaks and the purple 200 exponential becomes like a magnet for price action. And oh my God, I forgot one more thing about, <laughs> about that mid 4,000s-ish area. Well, as you might know, September is ending pretty damn soon and we'll get a new monthly candlestick pretty soon in about one day actually and as you can see over here putting on a 10 simple boomer average represented by the red line we are once again lassoed by this just like you were in 2014 dancing along this yellow 21 exponential just like 2014 and on a very low volume drift along this 21 exponential just like 2014 and huh, I want to remind everyone that my sort of background comes as an equity options market maker and so I'm used to looking at assets that have a lot of history so when we're looking at like generally bullish and generally bearish we look at like the 21 exponential to kind of decide okay are we generally bullish or generally bearish on the monthly time frame um so this is why i want to pay special attention to this as we get a new monthly coming up and if you are to break it that would enter into generally bearish territory i know this sounds crazy people would be like crowd what the fuck we just went down from 20,000 to 6,000, and you're saying we ain't even bar bear market just yet technically speaking yeah um although you know I mean, it's still a fucking major move. It's like, do you, I mean, does it matter what you call it? You know, it doesn't matter what you fucking call it. Um, but yeah, uh, so that would, if you were to break the yellow 20 month exponential, which Bitcoin is kind of resting on right now, that would make this blue 30 simple move and average right here kind of like a target, um, which is coming in around that uh, 4,000, you know, mid 4,000 area, kind of lining up with this horizontal right here if we were to kind of stick one in. Um, you'll also notice that, you know, if, if, you're not, if, if you're not convinced about the 21 exponential, well, how did you start your bull market? You got your first big fat candlestick closing above it right here on extremely heavy volume and that led up to this major overall trend uh just up just bull market up pair of tweezer tops right here on heavy volume resolved to the downside consolidate between 6,000 and 12,000 triangle then resolve that to the downside drift along the yellow 21 exponential which to me is a consolidation on your lows um which is not a sound of strength on very low volume and I become skeptical that uh, that we've seen the low so far. Is it possible? Yes. Well, what are the bulls looking at then? Because everyone's got a reason. I mean, like it's not just like people are just stupid and they have no reason. I mean, there are there's some people who are stupid. It's it's true. Um, but I'm gonna give everyone the benefit of the doubt. Maybe there are not some. Maybe you know there there are plenty of of smart people who are bullish right here. So what are they looking at? Well, they're looking at a falling pizza, and I absolutely hate falling pizzas because I actually hate pizza, and I hate falling wedges because uh, they tend to lie to me a lot of the times, or just in my experience. Um, this purple 200 exponential has been kind of like the basing area for this uh, for this formation. And, um, and again, just kind of bouncing off it less and less each time, you know, as you can see at each, each high is lower as sellers get more and more aggressive over time. Um, makes me think that, you know, again, just not a sign of strength. However, you know, you are in the actual formation of this. So a lot of people will be looking at this. A lot of people will be saying, Hey, falling wedge bullish. Uh, we got a measure move pointing us probably somewhere around 12,000. If I were to do this out over here and again, making an assumption here, if you would actually get confirmed on this, uh, yeah, somewhere around 11,700, something like that. Uh, so that would be very, very cool. However, again, let me remind you that just because it's in the formation of something does not make it just immediately. So there is a psychology behind every pattern and that's why it works. I mean, one of the big kind of gripes with technical analysis, people are like, oh, your triangles are going to tell you where the price action is going to go, huh? Oh, yeah, well, fuck you. Huh. Bitcoin's different. Well, it's not necessarily that it's in the formation of a triangle. It's the psychology behind it because this, this formation tells us something about price action as it consolidates in this range given a certain volume uh, signature. And right here, we see that volume is actually increasing as this pattern matures over here. If it's increasing volume as a pattern matures, as the sellers increase, essentially this is really selling volume that we're seeing increase. Well, that kind of destroys the nature of a, of a falling wedge now, doesn't it? Because a falling wedge is a shakeout of sellers which is you know you shake them out and they get they lose their power over time and then price action is allowed to just kind of go on up as all those sellers are like all right well, fuck it um so again 
<laughs> never, never just so simple, right? Uh, never just so simple. And that would be my, my big kind of uh, gripe with that right there. Uh, also, you will notice, uh, let's go, let's go back into the three day on, on Finex. You will notice that the 10 simple moving average is, is once again, kind of uh, sloped down. And, uh, we did get the cross of the 10 simple to the downside of the yellow 21. It's not necessarily my, it's not necessarily a strategy that I, that I adhere to on a three day, but, but the way that they're kind of like interrelating with each other does feel like there's, there's, there's pressure down. Um, the two days actually underneath. So, I mean, the, the, the two day looks like it actually wants to cross the upside. So we do have, you know, a very like fumigating gating ish of price action right over here as uh, as it kind of gets stuck in between the higher, the higher level exponentials and the lower ones. Um, so I do believe that we're going to have a move very, 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 very soon. And you know what we actually, <laughs> there's actually an indicator for that. <laughs> there, what's that commercial for? There's actually something for this. It's like, all right, whatever. Um, no, damn it. That's not what I want to do. I, we will look at, we will look at the uh, accumulation distribution indicator very, very soon, but I wanted to look at the Trollinger bands. Hey, get on over here. Trollinger bands. There we go. Get your Trollinger bands out and flying around. And as you can see on the two day, on the two day, we did close, uh, another dilly below this, uh, this, this skid mark right here, the reddish brown 20 simple moving average, which is actually kind of have a neutral to slightly, uh, slightly positive slope right here. So fair enough. Um, that would be kind of a more neutral, neutralist thing overall. But again, the point of looking at this is we want to see how tight these bands are. And these bands are fucking tight, man. And the tighter that they get, the more likely you are to have an explosion. Um, and when you are living below the medium band, it does kind of imply a test to the lower band, uh, on the daily, let's go check out the daily the daily is actually above right now and using the 20 simple as support so this so the daily actually looks you know the daily doesn't look too bad the daily the daily's the daily is kind of like the saving grace on this one um, in my opinion but again getting extremely tight this thing is very very likely to blow soon what about the three day that i'm doing like this in terrible order the three day is also living below the 20 simple moving average over here or i guess well this current this current one is the the last one did close above to be fair enough uh, but again it getting extremely extremely tight, extremely tight. Um, and the 20 simple moving average more importantly is sloped to the downside. The weekly, the weekly is the, is the most important one to me because again, it just holds a lot of weight as people don't want to wait for a fucking week, but uh, you haven't, you haven't opened and closed a candlestick above this, uh, this skid mark uh, trend line uh, ever since about late January actually. And the fact that Bitcoin has actually just perfectly wicked up and touched it and kissed it and said, Nope, no, thank you. So far, it doesn't mean that it can't happen, but, um, but to me, this could just be another rejection in the making. Again, 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time will be the deciding factor. Could it happen before then? Yeah, absolutely. Anything's possible. Again, anything's possible. While I, while my, while while my opinion is bearish, and I believe that we probably will see new lows over time, um, I could very well be wrong in that, and I don't trade my fucking opinion. Um, anyways, so. Uh, <laughs> So again, I'm I'm very curious with how this next uh, weekly closes. Do we close above or below this uh, this 20 simple moving average, which is around 68.50, and also get an extremely tight as well? And this would be suggesting that you're probably going to test the lower band if you were to, if you were to kind of um, break break out or break down. Uh, by the same token, if you do break to the upside, well, maybe you do have a, maybe you do have a nice Soros taking you all the way up to 8,200-ish area. Very, very possible as well. Well, I'd say less probable, but possible uh, nonetheless. Um, let's go check out. Uh, let's get off of the Trollinger bands, and let's put back on these exponentials, and let's put on the accumulation distribution indicator. Let's do our daily rounds of the accumulation distribution indicator. All right, there we go. And uh, weekly is, again, once again, sloped down. So we have the weekly sloped down. What is the three day? The three day is sloped down. This is bad. The two and, uh, and with this indicator, all I care about is the slope. The two day is sloped up, so that's good. And the daily, which was sloped up yesterday, has taken a sharp, sharp downtrend, uh, sharp downturn in today, into today. So we have all the higher time frames um, being sloped down, and you know, especially the monthly. Th this is the monthly right here, and this is why I'm... <laughs> this is why I also am, am uh, bearish overall. Uh, when you look like this, I mean, th this is this was 2014 over here. You you've never been this aggressively sloped to the downside since 2014. Um, probably gonna put some 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 time in the red, and as we do get a new monthly pretty damn soon. So again, you know, awareness of these sorts of things. Um, so yeah, uh, while we do have the two day kind of hinting at it, had an upward slope, 
every other higher time frame is showing pretty heavy downwards pressure as they all kind of like get smoothed out over time. Yesterday, when we looked at it, the daily and the two day were both sloped to the upside and everything else was sloped to the downside. Well, now we have one more bite in the dust onto the bear side. Um, I would say this on the monthly, your stochastics, well, they look like they are losing momentum, but I, I think I take that back. It, it, it's, it's inconclusive right there. Um, RSI is looking like it wants to give a formal test in, of to the neutral zone, the, the 50 area right here. Um, again, you'll notice in 2014, you actually never even really went into the bear zone on the, on the monthly RSI. You just went into the, uh, just kind of tapped and said, nope, no, thank you. Um, here's the weekly RSI from 2014, uh, from 2014 uh, compared with 2018 as well. It's kind of right here is 2014, right here is 2018. Okay, you already get that. Um, and you can see that, hey, Bitcoin has never really put in time below, uh, below the bear zone ever since, you know, 2014. This is the first time that it's ever really done this. Disregard this area over here, it was too young to really compare it. So I'm just gonna scroll on from that. Um, but yeah, just another thing to be aware of. And Bitcoin is trending right at that exponential right there saying, all right, do we want to do this or not? So I believe that, so, uh, so, so going along with the trolling bands as well, it does feel like things want to, uh, it does feel like things want to give a direction pretty damn soon. Also on your weekly, by the way, the 10 simple movement average is is giving resistance to price action as well. I actually didn't catch this before, um, but fair enough. You know, you're living under it, still using it as resistance, so certainly not a good sign. Um, but again, until you actually get the full on break, I don't want to be too damn, I, I really don't want to represent my biases with the position just yet. Um, as it could, you know, you never know. I've, I've seen, we've all seen crazier things. We've all seen crazier things. Now let's go over here and just kind of flush this idea out a little bit more. Oops, that is uh, the MVT signal over here. And by the way, if you're not familiar with the MVT signal, it's completely removed from price action. Like what 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 we typically look at in indicators, you know, meaning price, volume, and time. It's actually calculated by the network value divided by the 90-day moving average of the daily transaction value, which means it calls tops really fucking well. Uh, 2013, uh, end of 2013, bull trap, bull trap 2014, end of 2017, and a couple of times in 2018 as well, in some uh, resulting in some big downturns. You'll notice that every time it does reach these critical numbers above this 150 mark, where my cursor is kind of uh, highlighted at right now, um, it does typically correlate with a move back down into this region over here, well below the 50 zone, uh, right, right here, right here, right here, right here. But you'll notice that we have not quite done it just yet. In fact, Bitcoin is at one of the highest levels it's ever been at on the MVT signal and uh, and not really representing it just yet um, with price action. So this also makes me skeptical. It makes me a skeptical hippo, a skeptical panda or whatever. I don't know. I don't know. That makes me a sad panda. Um, <laughs> but again, you know, just another thing kind of aligning with that idea. Let's go check in on the um, on the shorts and longs data over here on Datamish because that's exactly what Datamish is for. And here we got the total shorts, which is around, a, which is a little bit over thirty thousand right now. So they ha certainly have gained in the last uh, in the last day or so, uh, paying a rate of not point not not eight percent, which is pretty much nothing. Um, and then you have the longs over here, which are right around twenty seven thousand, which are paying about double that rate, a little over double that rate at not point not one eight percent on average, which is not it's it's really not that high. It's it's not low either, but it's also not high. I think people you know if people are saying that that's high. It's, I think that's a little bit too. I think you're showing your a little bit too much. Um, okay, so how many how many of these guys are hedged for the shorts? Well, about five point two thousand of them. So we really have about a little under twenty five thousand open shorts. So it's a little under twenty five thousand versus um, about twenty seven thousand uh, long open longs. So so it is actually favoring the longs right now. Um, with that said, I do want to kind of look at the uh, at the data for these guys. I'm curious where a lot of these shorts entered because we did get a we did get a good amount recently. Um, yeah, so so a few of these shorts going up right over here, which was uh, yesterday at thirteen hundred my time. Let's go see what price action was looking like. Uh, thirteen hundred. Uh, whoops, that's way over here, wasn't it? Okay, so they're actually they're they're neither feeling pain nor feeling pleasure, but they are gonna they're gonna feel some pain if we do rally up any 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 more than what we have right here right now. But again, just like anything, you know, some people will hold positions underwater. Um, let's go look at the longs. Uh, longs. Um, well, it looks like most of them got liquidated so far. <laughs> being long in a down market it's uh not been too profitable not been too profitable all right um 
so fair enough. Uh, not too much to look at there. Let's go look at GBTC. GBTC has been kind of like a leading indicator for Mr. Bitcoins and GBTC actually closing and making new lows, by the way. This to me is actually pretty damning right here. We, we've been looking at this for a little bit of time. Uh, we had these two trend lines uh, kind of stuck in the sand right around here. And yes, while I do have this diagonal trend line kind of meeting price action where it currently is, and maybe that does provide a bounce, you are starting to break these, these, uh, these very important horizontals right here, which to me, could I th I think that GBTC is actually hinting at a at a major breakdown to be honest with you um, I really don't see much holding it up from about seven and seven eleven which is good because everyone likes seven eleven Slurpees man um, but yeah in a brawny wedge over here breaking it to the downside very very similar to Bitcoin you could even say there's a head and shoulders right here although I, I you see a head and shoulders as a reversal pattern not a continuation pattern so that's a little bit less likely speaking of though I know uh, Peter Brandt or Richard Peter Brandt, yeah, uh, was calling this as a compound fulcrum. And you know what? He's right. It is compound fulcrum, but that is, it, I mean, it could be. And uh, compound fulcrums, while they are a reversal pattern, meaning uh, it would be a bottoming formation, um, they're extremely rare. So it's possible. And in my experience with technical analysis, in my experience with trading, the most obvious things are the ones that are the most dependable. Uh, putting putting my faith in something that doesn't happen all that too often is something that, that I want to kind of avoid. So I do want to talk, I did want to directly reference that just because I think it's important to, to kind of line up. So how would you know, how would you know that the compound fulcrum has been resolved to the upside? Well, there's actually a very easy way. Um, if you take out the high right here at about 7,400 ish area, then you got that, uh, then you got a, yourself a reversal on the compound fulcrum. So that would be uh, so, so that would be nice. But uh, again, do I lean towards that happening? Probably not. Probably not, but it is possible, so it's worth talking about. Um, what else we have to look at? Let's go look at uh, CME Futures. Uh, CME Futures closed uh, Friday at 66.15, uh, um, right around here. So if, uh, if if you are around later today, we'll probably open the day or, you know, Bitcoin will probably rally up to kind of meet that price action um, at the beginning, at, at kind of the open of CME Futures, which is a little bit later today on Sunday. Um, so just something to be aware of. You know, you probably, get, probably do get a rally. Uh, something like that. Let's go back to the bitcoins over here. Let's talk a little bit more about short-term price action. Um, as we are in the, as we are in a pretty tight range over here. So I do want to be extremely clear. Hey, I think that a huge move is incoming. So you know, be careful with positions because they can it, it can run extremely fast. Uh, but 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 we have support right around here. So uh, I mean, while it doesn't look too damn strong, and you are kind of like curling over right now. Hey, you got it until you don't. Uh, you got resistance right around here, and you have your next set of resistance right around here, and you have your next support somewhere. Yeah, right around there. Yep. Okay, I like that. And then this guy, very obviously as well. Okay, great. Um, so yeah, you know, if you do break above, I mean, I, I'm just gonna look at this as a range right here. I don't really look at this as resistance in this area. I just kind of look at it as a range. And you are, you have this very like snaky price action. So um, it's gonna kind of be like a trudge, uh, whether it's up or down. Uh, but if you do break above this guy right here at above uh, 66.50, I don't see much stopping you from about 60. Do I agree with that? Hold on, let me let me backtrack this one. I might be taking this one away. Uh, yeah, my, I'm moving this one up here. Um, yeah, if you do break above 6650, I really don't see much stopping you actually from about 6750, which would be, and I do love how it actually correlates well with this downtrend line right here of the smaller descending triangle. Um, that would be your next huge Tesla if you were to break above that area. If you do break above 6750, you probably have a nice run on your hands. Um, yes, you do have resistance right here at about 6850, but I would, I'd, I'd, I'd probably think that you make your way around 7,000 at that point. Um, Again, that's an opinion though. If you do break 6650, then there's very little holding you up from about 6450, actually a little bit more accurately right around here. If 6450 breaks, very little holding you up from about 6370. And at that point in time, you really don't wanna let go of about 6300 support because that would initi that would officially resolve this uh, to the downside, this, this uh, broadening wedge or bear flag, which could initiate that measure move. However, again, 6150, the big area to be aware of, as long as you're above 6150, really don't want to be too damn bearish um meaning like looking at looking for new lows but uh but if you were to break 6150 yeah i'd probably uh, that's going to be 
that's going to essentially be what I'm looking for. Um, I believe that's probably going to do it for this video. Uh, let's go do a quick look on Mr. Buterall over here. Mr. Buterall hanging around 170, 131 and 70 cents, having just quite the week. A uh, huge wick up to start this morning. And um, let's see, this is, I actually need to redraw this or something like this. Um, but, but essentially, Mr. Buterall is in something like it, it broke down from this rising channel and basically form this broadening wedge over here and while it did have a nice wick up I, I, I was asleep during this this is this is fucking wild right here um but while it did have a nice wick up during this time um you know rejected and again just kind of meeting your former resistance trend line uh that's that's really all it is um from the way that i look at it now you actually do have a very obvious resistance trend line right around here so if you are able if you are able to kind of close a two, uh, two hour candlestick above 232 and 50 cents um ish then i really don't see much stopping you from kind of like this uh 240 ish range probably a nice round even number by the same token if you do break this guy right here uh if you do break the 226 and a half support i really don't see much much kind of holding you up from this area right here oops let's get in on over here uh right around uh 221 ish area and if this bottom support breaks somewhere right around 218 and a half then you got a big problem because you're you just had a couple of <laughs> you just had a couple of bearish formations resolved to the downside um but this one's a little bit less less uh i don't want to say certain certain is not a good word um but a little bit less uh there, there's kind of some intricacies within this one uh, let's go to the daily over here i need to go to finex because it has more price history um and I actually am representing this as, as a major bear flag right here or rising channel. Um, but you are living above this yellow 20 minute exponential. So I would actually be looking at that as a buy, um, to be quite honest. So Mr. Butyrol makes me think that we probably, that we actually do take a leg up um, as it looks more healthy than Bitcoin right here. I mean, not that, I mean, this is not a healthy chart. Don't get me wrong, but it, it looks like it wants to kind of rally back into this. I mean, you know, as, as long as you're below this area right here, or what is it? Yeah, right, right, as long as you're below like 360, 370-ish area, still an overall bearish chart with this you know rounded off formation um but you know you could also rally all the way to there and still you know and and it's and it wouldn't really change too much um i want to check out the weekly and the weekly looks like a major major capitulation hammer right there with fall through on top of that so i like that as well and then this week has been some some good red action now the fall through candlestick actually had this major red volume dilly right here uh this huge one sticking out uh, above anything else actually um so that does call into question a few things but i just uh, you know i'm not really sure if i want to make anything of it too uh just yet but just pointing that out um overall bitcoin still holds precedence in my mind and i think that's probably going to do it for this video this morning i hope this video finds you well i'll be back on a little bit later with some live stream action also again i do want to remind you check out the crown jewel indicator mastery video if you're interested in that that one's for like the diehards who want the indicators right and i've been showing those indicators sometimes in scalping uh videos i've i've uh, the crown trading stochastics the crown trading Fibonacci and the crown trading RSI and those essentially time ex entries and exits for me. And they've been, you know, while I feel a little bit like dirty to say they do this, like I can just say that my, <laughs> my experience has been very good. So I'll just put it that way. Anyways, if you're, if you're interested in that, definitely check it out. I understand that for most people, it's probably not going to be, you know, reasonable at all, but Hey, it's, it's probably not for you. Then. It's probably not for you. Um, so again, it's been an absolute pleasure to speak with you this morning. I hope this video finds you well, and I'll see you guys in a live stream near you soon. Take care.